Have you heard of Quranly? It's a habit-building Quran app unlike anything you've seen before. The app tracks your verses, pages, time, and hasanat gained as well. I've tried it too. Check out the seven-day free trial and see for yourself. Take your Quran reading from inconsistent to finishing it twice a year with the meaning. Download it on the App Store now. Search Quran Lee. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. My beloved students, learners, One thing that I always remind those who are still in schools, colleges, and universities is that we who are already out of that look at you, whether you like it or not, as the future leaders. Allah's plan is such that he placed you and I in different times on earth. So I would be of a generation slightly earlier than yours. The general rule, although there are quite a few exceptions, is that the older pass away before the younger. The general plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the older people need to care enough for the young ones to teach them what they need to know in order to continue after the older people have left this earth. Hence, when you come into a school or a college, you will always learn the latest that has been discovered. You will always learn what exactly you need to know from what the world already knows so that you can take it from there further. They say, You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Why? It's invented. We will show you what it is. We will, you can make use of it, but now you can progress and you can perhaps come up with something even better. So we expect you to learn from us as much as you can. Even if you watch someone and you look at the way they carry themselves, what they do, you will learn a lot. And then Allah's plan is that each one of us, our hearts, our minds are inclined towards different topics, different subjects. Not every one of you, mashallah, all these good looking boys and girls from the colleges, smart, well dressed. Not every one of you loves the same subjects. Am I right or wrong? Why? That goes to show that diversity is part of the plan of Allah. Had it not been for that, it would have been so boring on earth. All of you, mathematics, you got 99% or 100%. Who was first? They say they were Thai. Who was Thai? The whole class. Well, then it was boring, right? So boring. But there are some who excel, some who love it, some who don't really take to mathematics. They love physics, some biology, some perhaps Some other ology, subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. Yesterday I said a little joke. That's why I remember it now. Should I say it? When I said some other ology, they say there was a young man who used to take people from one island to the other on a boat. He was not educated as such, but he was earning a living. And as he got a group of professors onto his boat, they began to mock at him. And the moral of the story is, I can tell it to you before I even complete the story, do not mock at people. Don't mock at them, no matter who, what, where, why, and how. Don't mock. Mocking is not a good thing. Appreciate the diversity. Some are different. So they got onto the boat and they started saying, have you been to school? He said, no. Do you know biology? He said, no. He said, you wasted your life. Haven't even been to school. Do you know sociology? No. Do you know geology? No. Do you know psychology? No. And they started laughing and mocking at him and so on. A little while later, the boat began to rock. Why? Because of the tide, as you see nowadays, mashallah. And the waves were huge. And as the boat is rocking, this young man throws at them a few of these life vests. And he says, guys, we we have to be ready to... Jump in perhaps if there is any emergency. So just put these things on. They looked at him worried. 
They were scared. Moments ago they told him you had wasted your life. So they said, what do you want us to do? He says, do you know swimology? <laughs> they said, no. He said, you wasted your life. There it goes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So all these ologies. Anyway, let's get back to what we were saying. Right? It was a good diversion. The reality is, Allah has created this diversity, but together with that, you will only be able to achieve if you have within you quickly developed a sense of responsibility. Why do I say quickly developed a sense of responsibility? When you are teenage, when you are adolescent, when you are young, your boat is rocking, my beloved children. You don't know your emotions are everywhere. Your inclinations are all over the show. Your mind is fresh. You'd like to take and you don't know what to take. The glamorous nightlife might overtake some. May Allah protect us. The sooner you realize, hey, 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 hey. I need to be responsible. I can't carry on this way here. The sooner you will be able to succeed or the greater you will be able to become, the more you will be able to achieve. It's normal for a young teenager, adolescent to feel angry sometimes. Oh, it's okay, but control your anger. We are here to tell you, calm down, calm down. We've been through this. Relax. You're not the only person on earth. You will still have a few misunderstandings between you and your parents in nearly all cases. Why? Because they belong to a different generation. That's the reason. They won't understand exactly what you're going through in your class, the pressures you have while you are sitting and the professor or the teacher is teaching you and the others are mocking at you. And then you have the wise one from the, cha from the, the students who are with you uh, with a pea shooter. You know what's a pea shooter? They take the little barrel of the pen and they roll a little piece of paper in it. They put it in and poof, and the next thing you get it on your ear and you, you look back and everyone's just busy working. You're wondering who is it? Wow. And then it creates a problem. A little while later, you come up with your own pea shooter and the barrel is bigger and the piece of paper is even larger. Wah! And then you get caught. That's what happens. And then everyone thought it was you always. That's part of growing up. I hope you've come out of that phase. Am I right or wrong? Some of us may not have really been in that phase. Not everyone goes through exactly the same challenges. But the sooner you progress and realize I must be responsible, let me build myself because the teachers and the, the educators and the seniors would only be able to point towards what I'm supposed to do. But I'm the one who is going to walk the walk. Subhanallah. I'm the one who's going to be able to help myself. So what do you develop? Develop yourself in terms of your relationship with your maker to begin with. The sooner you realize, I got to pray, the greater the chances of your success. Because you came from somewhere, you're going back to where you came from. Allah speaks about it in Surah Taha. We created you from a certain source. You will go back to it, which is sand, which is dust, which is the soil. Allah says, we created you from it. You will go back to it and you will be resurrected from it. That's a simple verse to tell you where are you going to go after you die. Well, wherever I was before I was born. Simple as that. It's going to be awesome, man. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. May Allah make it easy for us. So the sooner you realize that sense of religious responsibility. Why am I mentioning it first? I'm mentioning it first because of its importance. But many people do not develop it first. Sometimes people realize the importance of religion a little bit later on in their lives. However, do not allow your boat to rock to the degree that you are flung out of that particular boat. Do you see? You may be swaying. You may not be such a pious person. You may not be so religious for now. You know what? For as long as you know that I am trying my best and I'm going to improve and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, inshallah, you're heading in the right direction. Let's move on to the next type of responsibility. When you begin to realize that I must develop my own character quickly, you become a leader at a young age. Because leadership requires you to develop your character and conduct to be able to address those who oppose you strongly with utmost respect. You're a leader. We are proud of you. 
If I can stand up in front of you and say, my sister, my child, my brother, whoever it may be, firstly, I did not call you bad names, right? I addressed you as a brother, as a sister, or as sir or madam or whoever it may be. I very strongly disagree with what you have said because of A, B, and C. Wow, was it wrong to say that? It wasn't. I disagreed, but was I respectful? And I can smile with it, and I can go and greet them later on, or if I'm talking to them, I make them consider what I'm saying. Because if I disagreed as an intellectual, surely there should be reason for my disagreement. And if I am a strong person, a powerful person is the one who is prepared to give up their opinions when they are proven totally wrong. When you are proven totally wrong, someone tells you, listen, it's wrong because of so, so, and so. And you might want to give back. They will give back. You give back. They will give back. And at the end of the day, you say, you know what? I was actually wrong. You were right. It requires a very strong person, a leader, to actually acknowledge, you know what, what you said is better. Look at the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He had Jibreel come to him and reveal what Allah had instructed. So he had a link with Allah, right? But still Allah told him, Shawir hum fil amri, Allahu Akbar. Allah says, your companions, those around you, Consult them regarding their opinions in certain matters, in certain matters. So if you take a look at, for example, the Battle of the Trench, anyone knows whose idea it was to actually dig the trench? Put up your hand. Yes. Salman al-Farisi, radiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with all of them. Salman was an outsider. He was a foreigner. He was not from among the community. He was not from their lineage either. He was not from their race to begin with. But when he came up with an opinion, did the Prophet, peace be upon him, say, no, we don't want to listen to this guy because he's not from us. Or did he say, you know what, this person comes from a different race. He embraced it completely. He said, that is what it is. Let's do it. They did it. What did it result in? That entire war, the uh, Mushrikeen of Makkah or the people of Makkah were left surprised. And they had to leave after some time. And Allah sent help in various ways. But the point is, here is a leader acknowledging that your opinion, although I am the leader, but your opinion was what we actually took. So with us here, what we want from you, my beloved children, is to quickly develop yourselves and realize you must be responsible. Build your character. Look at how you talk. Look at how you carry yourself. Be respectful in the way you carry yourself, the way you communicate. And don't waste your time with that which is futile. You're allowed to play games. You're allowed to participate in sport, you're allowed to be on your phone, but there needs to be a limited time on that. Because if you are not doing something constructive and, and productive with your phone, I'm giving you an example of the phone, but it's anything, then you would be wasting your time, your life, and the, these years where you are being molded, we don't want the mold to come out the wrong shape. Sometimes you make a big mistake when you're a teenager. May Allah protect all of us. Our boys and girls, we pray for you. We want to see goodness for the nation and for the ummah and for humanity at large. We want to see positive growth. I've got children of my own. I am worried about what will happen in the next generations if on the globe there is so much of intolerance. It's scary. People are at war for small reasons. It is avoidable. It is avoidable. So what do we have to do? We empower you with the ability to discuss, the ability to resolve, the ability to sit around the table and understand. Let's talk with those we don't even want to look at because we will need to do that for the betterment of humanity at large. There it goes. So if you're going to take so much of time in that which is futile at this age, 
you know what? You're being molded, man. The blunder that is made sometimes is so enormous, it lasts with you for the rest of your life. Allah would have forgiven you. That is something that is a given by the will of Allah. You seek forgiveness, He forgives. But the harsh reality, this is what it is. Sometimes, together with that, you have to live for a long, long time with that particular item. I don't wish to give you examples, but you can think of a few. Right? You're intelligent, perhaps more intelligent than I am. And you're young, minds are fresh. Use them in something good. I'm not saying don't play, enjoy yourself. We have to also not forget this worldly life. Karun was a man. He earned a lot. He was wealthy. He was far wealthier than you and I. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qasas regarding Karun that the people told him a correct statement. وَبْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكِ I mentioned it a few days ago where he is being told to use whatever Allah has given him to build the hereafter because he was already given the world. He had so much of wealth, so much of wealth that the Quran says, the Quran says, a group of strong men would find it difficult to carry only the keys to his treasures. Imagine, imagine how much he had. The Quran is telling you, a group of strong men would find it difficult to carry only the keys to his treasures. How many treasures must have this guy had? Wow, subhanallah. Looking at Elon Musk today, people are saying he might be the first trillionaire on earth. Big deal. His trillionaire would probably be one card, a bank card. That's it, plastic. No keys, no nothing. Subhanallah. Agree? Or maybe a little wallet that tells you, I've got so much of crypto. That's it. It could be. At that time, real wealth, the gold, the silver, and so on, that which was real, it did not lose value the way the paper loses value today. Anyway, that's a topic on its own. Let's not go into it. But the point is, Allah's telling this man, you already have. Why don't you prepare for the hereafter and be good like Allah has been good to you? The point I want to raise, if Allah is telling him, لا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا, don't forget your portion of the world. It's not like you have to divorce yourself fully from the worldly life. You must enjoy. All of us would like to have a decent home, a decent job, a decent car, a decent income, if not a job. Then we would also like to have some reasonable amount of enjoyment within the limits of Allah. That's why I said, my children, you can enjoy yourself. But don't forget your prayers. Don't forget your responsibility. Don't forget your duty unto Allah. And you know it. I don't need to repeat it. What's halal, you already know. What's haram, you already know. Most of it, the bulk of it. You know what you need to achieve. That holistic achievement is what we need to see in you, our beloved children. Because after you, there's going to be another generation coming. Remember that. They're already there. They're born. If you are 15, 16 today, from the looks of it, I might be a little bit wrong, but I think I'm right. Then there are those who are born now who are 15, 16 years younger than you. Perhaps there will be generation gaps because, yes, life will change totally. They may not understand. You know, there's an Arabic saying which says, Ma'rufu zamanina munkaru zamanin qadmata. What we consider today as normal. It was considered totally taboo a long time back. I can't imagine my grandmother in a trouser. No ways. No chance. Right? Today we wear it and everyone's, okay, wow, she's covered, or she's covered well. That's how people say it. Right? She's covered herself. But do you know a generation or two back, that was like, oh, it was like Qiyama would have come if someone did that. But the scary part is munkaru zamanina. That which is considered taboo today, what's going to happen to it tomorrow? It will be considered, okay, by the way, 
people are upset with their mothers and fathers. You're too strict, you're too hard. And you tell yourself, when I have children, I'm going to be easy with them. I swear to you that when you have children, they will tell you exactly the same thing because there's going to be a new type of issue that you will be facing. That's how it's happened from the beginning. That's how it has been. So what do we do? Be responsible and preach and teach responsibility. Focus on the right things. You will graduate, you will succeed, you will achieve your certificate, you will enter into your field. I promise you, if you are a person with toxic habits, forget about what you achieved at school. It was a waste of time. And if you did not achieve so much at school, but you turned out to be a lovely person, you are the most pleasant, amazing human being. People love you. They want to be around you. Even though what happened at school? I failed three times. Oh, no, one, no one's worried about failing. I say, don't worry, man. You could have failed even four times. You're such a lovely person. It's who you turned out to be, not necessarily only your results. You follow the point? Very important. So some of us, we have, we crack all the A's, mashallah, A star, A star, A star, A star. But how's your attitude if you fail? Subhanallah. Attitude is also part of gratitude. You must remember, you show gratitude to Allah by perfecting your attitude. Hmm? Amazing. What I'm saying today is let's be holistic. Work hard at school also. Enjoy a little bit. Mashallah, be focused on your faith as well, for as long, meaning to the degree that you have to, it's important. And at the same time, develop, grow, grow in all aspects of your living, not just one. And learn to respect others. As you grow, you will find people in different spheres of life who have achieved differently from you, who may not have achieved as much as you have. But will you honor them? Will you respect them? So much so, I want to give you two quick examples. One is that of a beggar. May Allah protect us from that. Begging is something that is discouraged in Islam. The minute you have your limbs and so on and so forth, you should try to work and earn the best of the earnings of those which you have through your own perspiration. Okay? But if a person is begging, don't belittle them, don't rebuke them. Understand that. Don't rebuke them, don't belittle them. But understand that... Had it not been for the one begging, you would not have been able to give out charities. Or had it not been for those in need, even if they were not beggars, you would not have been able to give charity. So to a degree, the unemployment that we may be facing is also part of the plan of Allah to test both sides. Those who are unemployed should keep trying and not losing hope. That is an act of worship. Not to lose hope is an act of worship. Great act of worship. And those who have been given must keep giving. That's also an act of worship. Without belittling. Allah created because if there were no poor people, what would happen to zakat? What would happen to charity? What would happen to a pillar of faith? So that is an amazing example. That of a person who begs. Allah put them there in order for us to have this holistic idea of the world we would be able to be charitable we will reach out we will respect them and honor them i give you the second example the cleaners on the street and those who have menial jobs right you come out in your suit in your vehicle and you feel arrogant about yourself or should i say proud in the wrong way and you drive down and you look at these people and belittle them i promise you it is part of allah's plan had they all been just like you who would have cleaned the streets thank you right who would have cleaned the streets if if i look at you and you look at me and someone says would you come to my house please to clean my toilets i'll give you ten dollars are you crazy are you okay in your mind you know are you are you fine you're telling me I must come to your house to clean the loose. But there are others who will come to you and say, please, can I come to your house to clean the toilets? Give me $10. Do you agree? That's Allah's plan. They will come to you. There are some people because they, for them, they're looking for any employment. They're looking for food. So is it not part of the beauty of Allah's creation that he's made us diverse? Acknowledge it and respect it. And appreciate where he put you, your field. It's not all about being the richest in money terms. 
It is about being the richest in contentment terms. If we have 20 millionaires in this room, and inshallah, they'll be billionaires, and who knows, maybe trillionaires, right? I hope the currency at that time is worth value because I've been a, uh, a quadrillionaire, but it was Zimbabwe dollars, worth about five US dollars. <laughs> But still, if we all have real terms, millionaires in the room, I, trust me, it's no longer about the competition. It's about the quality of your life. Many people have a lot of wealth. The quality of their life is nothing to be jealous about. Not at all. May Allah Almighty bless you all. I've really enjoyed my few days that I've spent in this beautiful country. I've spoken to many of the student leaders across the, some of the islands that we have visited. And mashallah, I see the future, inshallah, bi idhnil wahid al ahad, by the will of Allah, bright. There are beautiful faces beaming, and at times, as a father, and, uh, you know, one of those who's been in counseling and a few other um, things. I can see a face and tell you, mashallah, this face is shining bright. Or oh, these faces are shining bright. The minute we drop into irresponsible habits, do you know it shows on your face? How many of you, and I want you to put up your hands, how many of you can look at a person's face and tell that most probably this person smokes cigarettes? Put up your hand. Thank you. Put your hands down. My point is made. That means you can tell on the face. It shows, doesn't it? Whereas you see a face that is beaming, sparkling, you know they've kept themselves away from habits that would bring them down. I just gave you one example. I could have said that of drugs and that of whatever else. And it's the same is true for, for most of that. So that's the last point and I want to end with this. My beloved children, build your good habits. Build them. They will come when you make an effort to build them. To get up in the morning is something that is your responsibility, even when there's no school. Are you going to get up for your prayers? Are you going to get up because you need to exercise? You need to take your run around or you need to go and swim for a while or look after yourself. Healthy mind, healthy body, healthy relationships, starting with the relationship with Allah. That's what we want. So who's going to build their habits? You. Who is going to eradicate a bad habit? My beloved children. My beloved children. Fight your own bad habits. You know what they are. You find yourself getting addicted to something you're not supposed to be. Fight it. Because in the long term, it's going to come back to bite you. You are at an age, mashallah. The future is yours by the will of Allah. The future is yours. We won't be there. There will come a time when we have to leave, but we want to leave it in good hands. Those are the good hands we're looking at today by the will of Allah. We want to leave. We want you to be able to manage whatever is left in a better way than us by the will of Allah. May Allah bless you all. I've spoken a lot and I pray that we've benefited from what was said.